Good morning. My name is uh, Brian Mangan, and I am an Associate Professor of Epidemiology and Biostatistics here at Fiji National University. And I am also the country coordinator uh, for a, a multinational leptospirosis surveillance and monitoring effort here in the South Pacific in concert with the World Health Organization, Fiji National University, the Pasteur Institute, uh, the Secretary of the Pacific Community, and uh, local and regional health departments as community uh, stakeholders. Leptospirosis is an increasing problem here in the South Pacific and uh, WHO has listed it as one of their neglected tropical diseases. Uh, locally here in Fiji, leptospirosis is an increasing issue as well, which is one of the reasons why uh, a program such as this that looks at locally educating agrarian communities, which are most at risk for leptospirosis, is so important. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to walk you through my pitch or my proposal uh, for a leptospirosis prevention program for rural areas of Fiji. So, uh, first thing we need to talk about is the fact that uh, dairy cows are extremely common here in rural Fiji. It is a source of income and livelihood uh, for the indigenous uh, populations in the rural areas. They, they milk the cows, they, they sell the milk to organizations like Rewa Dairy, which in turn uh, produce powdered milk, since fresh milk is not particularly common here in the South Pacific. They also produce cheeses and yogurts, and so it's it's a wonderful source of income for these for these farmers living in rural areas. So it's very very common. You drive outside of the cities, and that's not hard to do. You're you know five minutes outside of Suva, the capital, and you're you're in farming country out there. So the cows are extremely common, as you can see from the picture here. But along with the cows and some other factors that we'll talk about later, leptospirosis is also extremely common. So um, what is the connection then between the dairy cows in rural areas and the uh, increasing incidence of leptospirosis? Well, uh, the cows are one of the more common carriers of leptospirosis. In other areas of the world, you see rats as common carriers, even dogs as common carriers. Uh, but epidemiological uh, zoonotic surveillance has taught us that here it's primarily the cows. So what happens is you've got these cows that are carriers, all right, uh, the cows uh, then shed the leptospirosis in their urine into the standing water in the fields, into slow-moving streams. And these also happen to be the same fields and streams where the farmers in the rural areas are working. So the farmers in the rural areas, they go into these fields, uh, they have cracks in their feet because it's very common to go shoeless here in Fiji. That's one of the great things about living here. I, I avoid shoes as much as possible as I can. In fact, I'm in my office right now and I'm wearing Tifa sandals. That's one of the joys of living here. So the, the farmers, they go into these fields and they, they're working with the cows, they're working with the cash crops in the fields. And so the cracks in the feet, the cracks, the abrasions, even up onto the sides of the leg, become infected all right, with the leptospirosis. Okay, So it's, it's, that's from what we can tell right now, that's the main, uh, the main vector of transmission that we're seeing here in Fiji and, and uh, throughout the South Pacific as well. So what we need to do is we need to develop a program where we can educate these farmers in these rural communities about the risk factors. How are they being exposed? And then we need to provide them the tools to go along with the education to prevent uh, the all righty so what are some of the other factors that we need to talk about in terms of leptospirosis uh, uh, spreading rapidly throughout the south pacific as a neglected tropical illness well uh, we have a really decent science here in the South Pacific from University of South Pacific, from Fiji National University, uh, from the uh, Pasteur Institute, from a variety of different organizations, WHO in the South Pacific, to show that climate change is a significant problem here. Okay, We're seeing increased amounts of flooding every year. All right. Uh, seasonally, we, we tend to see two flood seasons here in Fiji, but we also see that looking at historical meteorological records that flooding is an increasing problem. Okay? Uh, it tends to be associated with increases in temperature that have also been tied back into global climate change. We're also seeing that the rainy seasons tend to be prolonged. So all of this is increasing the amount of standing water that you have for the cows to stand out there and to urinate in and for the farmers to stand in in these rural areas. and to have a, a exposure. Along with that, we're seeing, like I mentioned earlier, increasing cases of leptospirosis in Fiji and throughout the region. Just here in Fiji in uh, 2012, 
We saw 512 cases and 52 deaths, which is up from the previous year. Uh, 2013 data is also up from that, and we're coming into 2014. We're coming into some of the traditional flood seasons, and so we're expecting to see another spike in leptospirosis. So it's it's easy to prevent. All right, we already mentioned that the uh, uh, the main mechanism of exposure is simply going into standing water, which is infected with leptospirosis. Uh, it's uh, we really what we want to do is we want to reduce their exposure to the infected water. All right, we're not asking them to not go into the infected water because that would be difficult for them in terms of caring for the cows and the crops that are being um, irrigated with the same water that has the ruminant uh, urine from the cows in it. So what what we uh, propose and which has been generally accepted by WHO as the main mechanism of prevention is the use of rubber irrigation boots and you can see an example of those here on the page. Now in the United States, uh, Canada, Europe, these things are readily available uh, in stores and, and for fairly inexpensive as well but the problem here in, in Fiji is you get into the rural areas and the rubber boots simply are not available or they're available at an extreme cost and if they want to get these at even a, a, a reduced cost they have to go into Suva, Latoka, and Nandi, one of the other large cities where they can access those. All right. So what we want to do is we want to educate the farmers about their risk factor and then find a way to give them access to the rubber boots all right, so that they'll wear the rubber boots while they're working in uh, situations where they might be exposed. Like I mentioned before, the fields around the cows and standing water and so on and so forth. All right, so where are we looking at piloting a project like this? Well, you can see the map here. This is Vidi Levu. Fiji's made up of over, you know, 200 islands, all right? The majority of them are small and uninhabited, but uh, Vidi Levu is the largest island. You can see down in the corner here, that is Suva, the capital where I'm located, all right? And we also have this area called Nasori, all right? Uh, Fiji does a wonderful job of breaking it down uh, major major areas into what we call medical subdivisions where there is access to primary and specialty care providers and there's generally a subdivisional hospital. Well, Nasori is one of our medical subdivisions. It's a rural area located just outside of Fiji and it also tends to be one of the hot spots in terms of our leptospirosis issues. So it has a high number of cases and it also, not surprisingly, has a large number of dairy farmers. What you can see here is, is this Nasori up into Coravao corridor here along what is called the Queen's Highway is a, a very large dairy farming area. Like I mentioned, the Rewa dairy buys a lot of its milk from the dairy farmers located in that area. So, since this is a hot spot and since it's conveniently located uh, near Suva, the capital, this will be the focus of this uh, leptospirosis public health education campaign. All right. So, if it's, if it's so easy to simply prevent leptospirosis by, you know, you know, giving out rubber irrigation boots, simply telling the farmers go in and buy these rubber irrigation boots, we have to ask ourselves, well, then why, why, why the cases? Why so many issues with leptospirosis? Well, it really comes down to number one, lack of education. There's been some previous work done by the Secretary to the Pacific Community, uh, going into these rural areas that suggest people know about leptospirosis, they know the potential risk of acquiring leptospirosis, but they simply don't know how to prevent it. All right. So that's going to be one of the issues that has to be addressed, this lack of education. How do we educate these rural farmers? Okay. Second issue is cost. I mentioned earlier, in the rural communities, the rubber irrigation boots simply are not available. Farmers have to come into Suva, have to come into Latoka, whatever large community they need to come into where they can access these things. Okay, That costs. All right, The cost of the bus fare, the cost of the taxi fare, the cost of transportation in, and then... Uh, the cost of the boots. The boots are not cheap. Okay, what in the United States might run you twenty U.S. dollars here is going to run you eighty, ninety, almost a hundred Fijian dollars. Which, if you look at the conversion rate, that would be roughly sixty, sixty-five U.S. dollars. Okay, when you've got people that are subsisting on less than between 50 to 100 Fijian dollars a week, that's a significant investment. Many of them don't see the need to invest in that, coupled with the lack of education on how to prevent it. Okay. Uh, third issue there I mentioned is availability. I've already talked about that. The rubber irrigation boots are simply not well uh, or not available in the rural areas. You have to come in. And even when you come in to say Suva, you have to know where to look for them. All right. A lot of the hardware stores do not carry them. There's only a few specific shops that I found that carry the all right.
so what we're doing is if you look at this we're trying to have a paradigm shift all right we're trying to go from the previous paradigm of lack of availability lack of education and financial resources or lack of financial resources getting in the way of people using the rubber irrigation booth so what is our paradigm shift going to consist of in moving away from that well what you have is is when you go into when you arrive in fiji you see that we have primarily two uh ethnic groups we have the indigenous Fijians known as the Ithakai, all right? So these are the Fijians that have lived here for, uh, across many millennia, all right? This is their home. They're deeply seated here in terms of bloodlines, village life, cultural specifics, and so on and so forth. <coughs> Excuse me. Then the second group you have are the uh, Fijians of Indian descent. Now, these are the individuals that were originally brought in you know the early the late 1700s early 1800s under the british colonial rule to work as slaves in uh, the sugarcane plantations all right because if you remember your history you remember that you know sugar was king king here in the south pacific and also throughout the caribbean basin and was uh, the means by which many many uh, uh, british uh, colonials were able to make their riches all right and they they did it squarely on the back of these uh, fijian of indian descent slave labors okay so what happened was these individuals even after slavery was outlawed in the uh, british colonial system in the british empire they remained behind and they have become once again just like the itakai they have become deeply seated in in long-standing bloodlines here in fiji so they consider themselves fijians all right but they consider themselves fijians of india and descent and what's really interesting is both within the cities and in the rural communities these individuals maintain highly separate identities so the Fijians if you go to a, a shared village area in a rural area you will see the Fijians live in one specific side of the village and the Fijians of Indian descent live in uh, the other side of the village and they rarely mix in terms of uh, cultural life social life uh, politics business economics and so on and so forth so they're very uh, distinct individuals so what we need to do is we need to look at working with uh, both of these groups as key community stakeholders all right sort of the community-based participatory research that we've talked about to prove that those three risk factors all right availability lack of education and lack of financial resources truly are the problems that stand between the agrarian workers in the rural areas adopting the use of rubber irrigation boots so that's going to be the first part about this paradigm shift is the conducting of focus groups in the Nisori medical subdivision rural areas with both Ithakai and Fijian of Indian descent agricultural all right what does that lead us to in terms of our paradigm shift okay well we're going to work with these individuals once we can prove these factors going along the lines of uh, community-based participatory research we're going to develop culturally appropriate materials all right uh, ultimately this is going to be simple educational campaigns such as posters that can be hung throughout high traffic areas in the village all right the the village market uh, the church the shrine whatever it happens to be but we want them to be culturally appropriate we want them to be targeted towards both the rural community and specifically the rural community life of the Ithakai versus the Fijians of India Indian descent okay um, I already mentioned there we're going to educate these we're going to develop these culturally appropriate materials in concert with these focus groups key community stakeholders to share in areas like schools churches shrines um, all of these communities maintain community stores oftentimes there's a community store specifically owned by uh, Ithakai that the Ithakai individuals go to and there's a store oftentimes maintained by the Fijians of Indian descent that the Fijians of Indian descent go to so we'll want materials for both of those groups um, English is the official language of uh, both government and education here in Fiji, but uh, Fijian is widely spoken by the Ithakai in their homes, and uh, Hindi, or a, a local variant of Hindi that has developed here over the past 150 years, is spoken by the Fijians of Indian descent. So it will be necessary in working with these focus groups to determine whether or not we will use language-specific educational materials, or whether or not it will be possible to simply use English language materials and simply vary uh, the tone of the text and the specific 
All right, the next thing, so once we've done that, we've developed the educational materials and we can see that we're getting some response, we're getting awareness uh, in the community. What we need to do in terms of the paradigm shift is provide access to the irrigation boots, okay? Because I, I assume what we're going to find is that cost and availability are going to be the major factors even after we overcome the issue of uh, education and risk, okay? So what we're going to need to do is we're going to have to find partner organizations that we can work with to provide either free access to, all right, in the community in the pilot project, or at least discounted irrigation boots. Okay, who can we work with? Well, we're fortunate in many ways, uh, sometimes even more fortunate than some of the programs that I've worked on in developed countries like the, the United States and the UK, in that we have a lot of partner organizations that are available here with access to really deep pockets that we can tap into. That If we can show that there is a need, which we can see from zoonotic surveillance, epidemiological surveillance locally, that we have this issue with leptospirosis, and if we can show through a pilot project that the community paradigm shift can occur, that we can get these agrarian workers to adopt the use of irrigation boots, then we can get these partner organizations to work with us to provide discounted uh, irrigation boots on a large scale. Now, for the purpose of this program, we'll probably want to work, uh, for the purpose of the pilot project anyway, this organization right here, the Secretariat of the Pacific Community, is a quasi- um, a quasi-diplomatic organization that I am accredited to, that I've worked with on numerous times throughout the region in uh, Solomon's on a dengue outbreak, for instance, and they are very integrated into the local communities here in Fiji, and they have shown some initial uh, response in wanting to provide discounted boots for these uh, individuals in the Nasori Corridor out there. So that would be part of the pilot project to work with the Secretary of the Pacific Community. But if we can show that that works, we have wonderful uh, donor agencies locally here that we can use to expand the program throughout Viti Levu, the main island here. Um, the United States Agency for International Development through the cooperative agreement here with the U.S. Embassy. Um, the Australian Agency for International Development, you can see there. Great organization, um, is highly supportive of of the Fiji School of Medicine and uh, University of South Pacific and a lot of our public health projects that we have here. I've already mentioned the SPC. The European Union is another wonderful organization that we have available locally here uh, that works primarily through the Development Bank and through uh, other, or, uh, other community-based organizations. China Aid is a wonderful organization based out of the Chinese Embassy here. Uh, I should mention that Australian AID is based out of the Australian High Commission. The China Aid is highly, highly highly involved in uh, developmental projects. They primarily work with infrastructure projects like road development, uh, build, uh, school building, hospital building, and things like that. But they have they have also in the past worked with public health projects, so they're one to approach. Um, the World Health Organization uh, has a regional or a sub-regional office. The main regional office is located in Manila, but has a, an office here that is very involved in public health projects, and I'm sure that they would uh, like to get involved. And of course, we're very lucky down here here in the bottom here we have the Fiji Ministry of Health is uh, led by Dr. Neil Sharma locally here we're very fortunate very turned on group of individuals in terms of working in public health and they have shown a keen interest in uh, surveillance and intervention projects to reduce the amount of leptospirosis uh, here locally in Fiji so like I said we're very fortunate that we have these great community so let's just review really quick here. What are our conclusions? Well, we talked about this fact that rural dairy farming is important to Fiji. You go to rural areas, you see cows. In particular, in the, the uh, Nasori Medical Subdivision, that Nasori Corridor, lots and lots of dairy farmers over there. It's important economically, and that in turn is important socially to the community as well. Okay, But we also have, with the cows, we have increased exposure to leptospirosis. So that's a significant issue that even though our rural dairy farming is, a, is an economic boost to those communities, we also see that leptospirosis is an economic drain to these communities. A uh, future project might want to look at what is the economic impact. Most cows are asymptomatic, but we want to. Look, but one of the problems we do see is that during the birthing season, a, a mother cow that is infected with leptospirosis is more likely under, uh, to undergo a spontaneous abortion. All right, so that's an economic drain on the community that we need to look at um, for a future program. 
Uh, we see increasing rates of climate change and other events, flooding, so on and so forth, uh, prolonged rainy seasons that are also impacting that, all right? All of this is leading to increasing cases of leptospirosis, but it can be easily prevented, like I mentioned before, through simple use of, of barrier protection, through the use of rubber irrigation boots. But we need to overcome the educational, we need to overcome the economic uh, barriers that stand in the way, and we do have the ability to do that through a pilot project such as this. All right, so an exciting project. Uh, just in conclusion, just remind everyone that uh, WHO has designated leptospirosis as a significant neglected tropical disease in the region, and the burden warrants a program such as this. So, thank you very much for listening.